Hello, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Bongi again uh, from JPG Computers. Uh, so today, I would like to explain some few things, okay? Uh, I do a uh, laptop marathon repairs, okay? Windows uh, laptops and MacBook as well. I wanna give you some tips, guys, okay? Whenever you are working with a dead marathon, make sure that you check 19 volts okay let's say the laptop is not turning on uh it's not charging there is no light it's not doing anything the first thing that you need to do check if your charger does have the 19 volts okay and then you move on you check the board itself you check if the board does have the 19 volts i'm pretty sure you'll be confused because the motherboard it has like thousand components okay and i'm sure you'll be you'll be lost you, you want to know where exactly to to mesh uh, to measure or to check the 19 volts it's very simple guys okay you follow the charging jack near the charging pin check there if you do have the 19 volts if the, if you do have the 19 volts move on again check on the board use those big capacitors to check if maybe you have the 19 volts or not okay once you confirmed with your 19 volts and you do have the 19 volts you move on what do you check next you check the 3.3 volts okay you check the 3.3 volts if you do have the 3.3 volts where exactly you're gonna have the 3.3 volts it's simple guys the power button the power button it works with a 3.3 volts check the power button if you do have the 3.3 volts because even if you do have the 19 volts the, the laptop it won't turn on if you are missing 3.3 volts imagine you're pressing the power button you're pressing the power button but you don't get any reaction the pc is not turning on it's not reacting with a button the, the reason why is because it's missing the 3.3 volts obviously it won't turn on if you are missing the 3.3 volts the button it won't work because it's missing 3.3 volts check if you do have the 3.3 volts on the button okay and again check if your bios chip does have the 3.3 volts okay uh, the bios chip it's got four uh four pins okay it's got four pins pin number one pin number two pin number three pin number four up to pin number eight it's got eight pins i mean sorry so check on the last pin of which is pin number eight check pin number eight if you do have 3.3 volts because pin number 80 is the 3.3 it's where the 3.3 is feeding the chip is feeding the power chip it's a v in it's how the power chip receives the power from the uh, from the 3.3 from pin number eight check if you do have the 3.3 volts on pin number eight of the bios okay and again if you are missing 3.3 volts guys if you are missing 3.3 volts let's say you don't have a 3.3 volts on the power button and you don't have the 3.3 volts on the power chip and there are many uh spots there are many uh points where you can measure the 3.3 volts but i was just giving you the common one of which is the power button the power button is the most common one for the 3.3 volts okay Let's say you are missing the 3.3 volts, as I was saying. What do you do? Okay, you go back. Uh, you go back to a schematic. You check where the 3.3 volts is generated. Okay, you check where is your 3.3 volts generated. Okay, because again, if the power button is missing the 3.3 volts, you can't blame the power button. You can't say, no, the power button is 40, there's no 3.3 volts. No, you, you check where exactly the 3.3 volts is generated. Okay, check the chip. The chip responsible for generating 3.3 volts. Check the chip. Okay, before you say, no, 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 my, uh, my, my power button is not working, it, it doesn't have the 3.3 volts. Obviously, the power button won't have the 3.3 volts if there's nothing supplying the power button with the 3.3 volts. Check the 3.3 volts, check exactly where the 3.3 volts is generated. Go back to a chip, a chip that is responsible for creating the 3.3 volts. And again, once you, you trace it back to a chip, you can't blame the chip, you can't just jump and replace the chip. What if there is a short? Okay, check if there is no short on the 3.3 volt. I hope you know how to check for a short, right? It's simple, guys. 
you take your your multimeter i'm not sure if you can see you take your multimeter okay and then you twist uh your multimeter to continuity mode okay this is the continuity mode here okay and then okay let me turn it on i believe my multimeter is on okay my multimeter is on now okay so this is how you check for for a shot if i combine these two okay you see it's shorted it means there's a short this means positive and negative attaching okay so you go back to any capacitor on the board where it's on the power rail for 3.3 volts because now we want to check if your 3.3 volts is shorted or not so you take this two you touch one side of the capacitor with one prop and you touch the, the other side as well uh with uh, one prop if it does this it means it's shorted it means the negative and positive are touching it means the ground and the 3.3 volts are touching okay it means there's a short there okay and again you can't just jump and say oh this capacitor is shorted uh i'm removing this capacitor no you have to check exactly where the short is coming from because obviously maybe you will have like five capacitors and um, that will be shorted okay and uh and you can't remove all of those five capacitors say, okay they are all bad they are shorted no you can't Okay, you can't. Okay. The reason why they are shorted is because there's something there on the power rail, on the 3.3 .3 power rail, shorted. And they will all be uh, behaving the same way, showing you that there's a short, whereas there's no short, okay? But one of them there will be shorted, causing a short. Even a chip itself might be causing the short. And how do you check for a short? You take your DC uh, power supply, you inject the 3.3 .3 volts on that power rail with a short you inject 3.3 .3 volts not just any power rail but on that 3.3 uh, .3 volts shorted power rail you inject uh, 3 volts and then you'll use your hand or you use alcohol to search uh, for a shorted part maybe you, the, uh, the, the bad part will get hot you'll use your hand and you check around okay okay I hope you learned something guys. Let's move on now to 5 volts. Same thing with a 5 volt. If you are missing the 5 volts, the laptop it won't turn on. Okay, it should turn on and quickly shut down. If you especially if you are missing the 5 volts, you are done with 3.3 .3 volts. I hope you learned something with the 3 volts. I'm just giving you uh some few ideas, okay. What I'm giving you is so important, guys. It's so important, it's very, very, very important. You need to learn this thing, okay? You do the same thing with a 5 volt. You check where exactly the 5 volts is coming from. If you do have the 5 volts, then it means a PC, a PC should be working. You move on. But if you are missing the 5 volts, you do the same thing. You, you check, you trace back where the 5 volts is generated. You do the same thing with the 3.3 .3 volts. As I was teaching you right now, guys, you check where exactly the 5 volts is generated. Okay? You do the measurement. You check for a short. 5 volts uh, is responsible for supplying the hard drive, okay, for supplying the um, USB port with the power and some other components, but more commonly the hard drive and the USB port. Okay, that's why we need the three point, uh, that's why we need the 5 volts. Okay, so let's say now you do have the 19 volts, you do have the 3.3 .3 volts. And you do have the five volts, but still the PC is not turning on. What do you do next? You move on. You check the CPU. Check the CPU power supply. Okay. Check the RAM power supply. Check for 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 a PCH. Check for a graphics card. Okay. Anyway, I, I'm just gonna stop here, guys. Hope you learned something.